Okay, hi everyone. Um, for this video, we're going to be talking about uh, householder matrices and how they're used. You know, when we have two vectors of equal length, we can find basically a householder matrix that transforms one into the other. Okay, so that is captured in this theorem. It says if we have two vectors in Rn, x, y, and they both have the same length. Okay. Then um, sigma is this kind of like uh, either plus or minus one, depending on the angle between x and y. If the dot, if the inner product is less than or equal to zero, we call, we take sigma to be one. If the inner product is greater than zero, then we take um, sigma to be negative one, and we let w to be x minus sigma y. Okay. Okay, and remember like um, the, the dot product that's like the the cosine of the angle between x and y related to the cosine of the angle between x and y so um, having negative dot product means like um, the cosine will be negative and remember cosine has a graph like this so um, the angle between x and y are like kind of far apart and the dot product is positive then um, the angle between x and y is like close to zero, relatively, of course. Okay, so um, this actually is just, anyway, so we take w to be x minus sigma y, and we take the householder matrix corresponding to w, multiplied by sigma, call that q. And q is a real orthogonal matrix such that qx equals y. Um, Q also has some other properties like um, any vector that's orthogonal to both x and y, Q, you know, if you have a u vector u orthogonal to both x and y, then Q u would be equal to u. Um, you know, that's uh, just a, an aside. Okay, so we're trying to find a real orthogonal matrix that transforms x into y. Okay. Um, so to prove this in the first step, we, we may as well assume we're in the case that the dot product of x and y is less than or equal to zero. If, it's, if the dot product of x and y is positive, we can just replace x with negative x. And then that, and then, um, and then uh, sigma will be one instead of negative one. Um, and then, you know, like, we can kind of unravel everything. Okay, so we, anyways, it turns out, yeah, we can just assume that sigma equals equals one, the dot product of x and y is less than or equal to zero. Okay, first of all, that tells us that um, w is non-zero, because if w was equal to zero, then x would be y, and the dot product between the two would be greater than zero. Okay, so w is non-zero, and recall the householder matrix we construct is u, w, which is the identity minus two times the projection onto w. Remember, that's just w, w star over w star w. Remember, w is x minus y. Okay, and so here's q times x. It's just the vector x minus two times the projection of x onto w. Okay, and we want to check that this equals y. Okay, so I've drawn a little picture here. Here's x and here's y. Um, okay, they're of the same length, meaning that this triangle is like an isosceles triangle. Okay, and that's really kind of the key to what makes everything work. Okay, um, and then over here, this is the vector x minus y because um, negative y is in over here and then x plus x plus negative y ends up over there. Okay. And then I'll call this vector the projection of x onto w, I'll call this r. I'll call the projection of y onto w r prime. Okay. So just by definition, r is just 
um, w w star x over w star w, and similarly for y. Okay, and what we want to show is that um, our goal is to basically um, verify that this picture I've drawn for you, well, is like accurate. And what does this picture say? Well, it says that r prime is negative r, and um, 2r is w, okay? And if 2r is w, then x minus 2r is gonna be y, and that x minus 2r is gonna be qx, right? Okay, so that's what we need to verify. We need to check that r is equal to negative r prime. We need to check that 2r equals w. And then once we have that, then um, x minus 2r is just gonna be uh, y. Just remember w we chose it to be x minus y. So therefore, x minus 2r will be, will be y. Okay. So that's why we need to check that um, r equals negative r prime and all this stuff. Okay. First, let's check that r minus r prime is actually equal to w. That's the first step. Well, r minus r prime, it has the same kind of this term is the same, and the only difference is in x and y and y and the other, so we get w w star times x minus y divided by w star w. But x minus y is just w, so now we have w w star w divided by w star w. Those cancel, we just end up with w. Okay, so um, r minus r prime equals w. Now we want to check that r plus r prime is zero. And, and that will kind of give everything will kind of fall fall out from that. Well, r plus r prime. To calculate that, we just have to calculate x minus y star times x plus y. Okay. And we'll see that this is actually zero. Um, and you know, if you if I go back to the picture briefly. Here's x minus y. Um, here's x plus y. They're orthogonal to each other, and that's what we want to verify. Um, crucially, this requires that x and y have the same length. Um, if, if, if x and y have different lengths, then this picture gets distorted, right? So we need x and y to have the same length. Okay, so let's verify that the that the picture. And have, that these two vectors are orthogonal. Um, if we just multiply everything out, we get x star x minus y star x plus x star y minus y star y. Um, and now since x and y are in Rn, like um, y star x is just x star y. This is the symmetry of the um, real inner product. Okay, so therefore this term minus y star x is equal to x star y, so on. Um, minus y star x plus x star y gives you zero, and you're just left with x star x minus y star y, but this is just the norm of x squared minus the norm of y squared, and the norm of x and the norm of y are equal, so we just get zero. So these two vectors are orthogonal. Now if we compute r plus r prime, it's just um, w, w star times x plus y divided by w star w. But we've already seen that this is zero, so the result is you get 0 times w, which is just the 0 vector. So that tells you that r equals negative r prime. Now, we've already seen that r minus r prime is w. If we replace negative r prime with r, we see that w is 2r. Okay. Now I'll rewrite it. Well, that means that x minus y, w is x minus y, remember? So um, therefore, x minus y equals 2r. Or in other words, x minus 2r equals y. And what's x minus 2r? That's just x minus 2w w star x divided by w star w. That's just um, x, the householder transformation applied to x. So in other words, that's just qx. And we've shown that's equal to y, so that's what we wanted to show. Okay. 
Um, now I'll state like the similar a similar theorem um, for complex vectors. Okay. So if we have two vectors in CN whose norms are equal, then we have this um, kind of factor sigma. We set sigma to be one if x is orthogonal to y, and otherwise we have this term, the conjugate of the negative of the conjugate of the inner product with x and y, divided by the um, modulus of the inner product of x and y, as long as the inner product is non-zero. Okay, and then we take our w to be my y minus sigma x, and then we we have this uh, unitary matrix U, which is sigma times the householder transformation UW, and it's unitary and it satisfies UX equals Y. Okay. Um, and the proof of this is is similar. So, um, But you know, there's a little bit of complications because you're working over the complex numbers. Okay, but um, I won't go into it. Okay, so um, that's it for this video. I just want to say in the next video, what we want to do is apply. We want to apply these householder transformations to um, to the problem of row reduction, right? So um, just just the idea. The idea we'll use is that, um, let's say I have a column, I have a, like some matrix I'm trying to row reduce, it has like an A, A1, A2, A3, and so on, all the way up to AN, and then some other stuff. The idea of row reduction is to do row one times uh, one over A1 times row one, and then do Basically, row two goes to um, row two minus a two row one. Row three goes to row three minus a three row one, and keep on doing like that. So a bunch of operations like that. Okay, and our and then the idea that's su suggested by um, by these householder transformations is to instead take c to be the norm of a one. Or sorry, the norm of the vector. The if we if we collect the first column in a vector, we'll call it A. Take the norm of A, then find Q such that Q times A equals C zero zero zero. Okay. So to use a unitary matrix, multiply A by this unitary matrix and it's basically a reflection which takes this vector a and reflects it onto this like vector with first coordinate c or in the rest zeros. Okay. So um, there are some advantages to that. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next and well for now the last video to do with this kind of thing.